704-528-2300. In Statesville, 704-873-4444. Don't forget, for the best food around and the best barbecue in North Carolina, it's Randy's Barbecue. It's summertime. Welcome to Racing Roots with Ham. If you don't know our host, David Ham, he's a 25-year NASCAR veteran, engine builder, and jackman. Live every Monday evening, we have a new guest. From the racing world with their stories, their paths, their, their racing, racing roots. Sponsored by Jersey Cape Yachts. Now here's our host, David Ham. And good evening, everyone. Welcome to Racing Roots with Ham right here on 550 and 92.9 WAME. Hope everybody had a great day. It's a little bit... Uh, moist out there and very humid so let me switch this camera over right quick so y'all can see us but uh hello everybody i got mike atwell in here with me this evening it's been uh quite a few years since i saw you it has. Uh, yes, it has. so um and then i've also got our buddy phil cavalli over here also known as photo phil all right oh probably turn you on over there phil there we go no don't turn me on your wife's here <laughs> <laughs> all right there you go so and we also had some visitors today from port port st lucie florida they come all the way here this evening just to watch the show and you're gonna drive back tonight right just kidding we got paul rodriguez and kit in the studio with us and they're camping yeah. down here on lake norman so oh they, nice so they Excellent. moving on up they in did, the high did, rolling did you come up for our 95 degree cooler weather i think uh, yes <laughs> port st lucie's probably warm now right yes yeah it's, it's probably i don't know if it's as humid down there though no, but man probably I on the what. breeze off the ocean so i think they come up here to check out the uh the jersey cape yacht demo boat out on lake norman <laughs> uh, we need that uh, that's right that's what everybody needs is one of those jersey cape yachts so thanks to our sponsor jersey cape yachts that is so all right, and then, of course, my wife, Tracy, over here, she'll be answering any questions that y'all throw our way, almost any questions. But if you got questions, comments, or if you want to tune in on the YouTubes, you can go on to DHAMIM on YouTube. Otherwise, you tune in on the radio at 5.50 a.m., 92.9 FM, or you can go on to WAMERadio.com and also on the TuneIn app. And you can see us here in the studio on the YouTube channel. So we got Mike Atwell. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing excellent. How about yourself? I'm doing great. I think I saw you, we had a, three years ago, uh, we had a, a cardboard boat, me and Matt Ashbrenner. Yep. And uh, we were, and I think Pam Ford was there. Yep. And then you came up. Yep. We, um, my wife saw it on Facebook or, or something, and it was the cardboard boat regatta. That's it. And uh, so she Oop. said, we, we got to take our girls to check this out and see what it's all about. Yes. And uh just by coincidence, ran into you guys. Yeah, who won that day? Um, I, I don't even recall. It was me and Matt. That, oh, was it? Yeah. <laughs> I was just saying the highlight was seeing you guys. Yes, so. <laughs> that's all that mattered, right? <laughs> that's really all I remember. We had the most square car, but we had a, it was made out of cardboard, obviously. Mm -hmm. And it was Boat Cephas, that's right. <laughs> and it was square, and it was covered with duct tape. And that's the only thing that kept it from sinking. Is that when you guys were the chillbillies? Yes. Okay, so you it. also had your little outfits and hats and stuff on. Uh, priceless. Yeah, coincidentally, I was as a, or as a pirate. <laughs> you know, that's what they say whenever your kid don't ever walk around with crutches because you're going to end up breaking a leg. Mm. You know how many times I've worn an eye patch or whatever, dressed like a pirate? Arg. And then three years ago, I had a yeah. detached retina, and now I had another one. But oh. um, but it's getting better. I was going to show Phil, but I think he gets a little grossed out what? by this. So <laughs> it's not too bad. So anyway, no. if you're if you're new to the show, as uh, Phil mentioned in the intro, um, David Ham and we got Phil Cavalli. And Phil is a NASCAR photographer for what thirty five years thereabouts. Or, oh, still hoping for thirty fourth year, but thirty three so far. Yeah, thirty three years doing the uh, na the. Uh, Hmm. Smart tour now. The smart the modified tour. Modified photography, yeah. How, how are smart you liking tour, that? Southern Modified Auto Racing Tour. It's fantastic. Bobby Labonte's competing in it. Okay. I think the next race is in two weeks, July 2nd at Carteret Speedway or Caraway. Okay. Caraway. Yeah. Caraway, okay. Yeah, you ought to go out for that. Yeah. It's great racing. Right out 64, I guess it is out yeah. that way. Yeah, so, um, so Phil's 34 years in. I was in NASCAR for 25 as an engine builder and seven years jack man and now mike atwell you started about uh, 96 i guess 96 would well technically i got my first paycheck mm -hmm. when 1992 from bob wickham racing bob wickham uh, yeah but i think i was only 13 
Oh, okay. Uh, so <laughs> child labor laws said yeah. you can't tax like, you on I this. Gotta, I got to get a bank account. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's pretty uh, neat. I, I had no idea because I, I mean I've known you a long time, but I didn't realize you were tied in with the Whitcomb family because I actually grew up right down the street from the Whitcomb. <laughs> racing. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, I was on it was Dixie Road, Dixie River Road, and I was over there on Elkhart Drive, which was off of Walker Square. So right next to Wallace Neal. Well, growing up, my my stepfather was uh, he was a body hanger fabricator. And at the time he worked there and, uh, you know, to kind of get my feet wet, that was my, my summer job is to come in and sweep the floors and, wow. you know, start out like every kid does in racing. Mm-hmm. So you were from this area originally? Uh, yep. Grew up in Charlotte. Okay. I was actually born in Tennessee. Wow. Uh, but soon after I was born, we moved to Charlotte and been here ever since. Well, and that's something you don't hear. Well, people say that whenever I tell them I was born and raised in Charlotte, they're like, oh, you don't see that much of that anymore, you right. know, because people are from everywhere else. It yeah. feels, feels from a somewhere no, way upstate new york upstate. Mm. syracuse yeah yeah and he's got an island up in canada yeah and the border's still closed it's his it is? Okay. yeah it still is but don't worry i'm paying taxes oh <laughs> yes i guarantee you, you're paying taxes yeah. not to live there which the, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That always sounds like the united states so anyway uh <laughs> hey to everybody that's tuned in sorry we i didn't really have a show last week i actually went and sat over in the old signal hill studio just to have a better internet and figured I'd at least do something, but Spencer Boyd was going to be on with me, and he had to cancel out again. He was different things going on, but uh, he was going to come in this evening. But he was in, ended up doing something in Nashville. But he's going to come back next week. But we are amply covered by Mike Atwell because I mean you've been you've been in NASCAR racing before Spencer Boyd w- was born, so or thereabouts, wow. or about the time he was one years old when wow. you got in. <laughs> so just for, look at it that uh, way. for making me feel young again. I appreciate that. Well, I'll tell you, whenever I first met you, I thought. You were like really, really young. I always saw you as a lot younger than me. But well, I was. I was like eighteen. <laughs> All right. But if you if you do the math, I, you were eighteen. I was twenty five, probably. Sounds about right. Yeah. But so that seems like now we seem like we're closer to age. Oh, absolutely. Not yeah. that you look older, but I'm saying you know, just because when we're up in the age, that's just the way it is. Like I me and Phil. I was yeah. in my thirties then. Uh, you're a lot younger than it, me. Yeah, but it just doesn't. It's not significant anymore. But when you're twenty five and eighteen, it's like a big difference. <laughs> that it, it is. It was Mikey. I always called it's, him like. It's a big difference at the end of a work day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Between being 50 That's and 60. True. It's getting harder and harder, yeah. let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> sure. Yeah, so Mike always drank the Coca-Colas. Um, so you still do that. Yeah, I try not to drink as much, but yeah. as you can as you can tell, that's not working too well. But <laughs> yeah, yeah um, but you still look young. Yeah. Gosh, you don't look like you're in your 40s. He does look young, don't he? Yeah. 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 You still got the baby face. Got the baby uh, face. Yeah, you're making me say. blush now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just remember that one time at the track, you were like, you had a headache. And so it's like you had to go get a Coke. Oh, yeah. 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 So, notorious for my headaches. Yeah. But so we, we traveled together for many years. And I actually put together a little slideshow and we can kind of talk about some of the pictures as we okay as we view them whenever we get to that and i know you brought an album too i didn't get a chance to look through it but you can go ahead and go back to your beginnings because that's what we do here on racing roots all right well pretty much like i said um really where we my whole family was kind of in in nascar growing up um since about when i was about five years old i think my mom got a job at hutcherson pagan which a lot of you old timers know they were a part supplier and, and you know built cars for years and uh, were also notorious for their parties mm-hmm. uh, every year they would throw a big party but mm-hmm. uh, my mom worked there for for close to 25 years pretty much till they shut down and uh, while she was working there she also met my stepfather so he pretty much uh, raised me and kind of you know showed me the way and uh, gave me my worth ethics and uh, really gave me, you know, the foundation for what I needed to, to you know, <laughs> yeah. See, the when foundation you that I needed to, to be successful yeah, yeah. in, yeah. Uh, in uh, NASCAR. So that's kind of where it all started. Um, and I did try to go to college. Uh, I tried for about two months. And um, Interfered of, with your racing, right? Yeah, I found <laughs> out real quick for me it wasn't the way to go. Yeah. And... Um, you know, within a couple of weeks, uh, I got my first full-time job at Sabco, and um, back in '96, and uh, that's that's where yeah. me and David met and um, started out. Uh, you know, washing cars, you know, pulling motors, you know, just like every every kid does. And um, we we found those pictures last night, and I was showing my girls. 
12 year old <laughs> twin girls now wow um show on one of my first jobs over the wall which is the window washer yeah um so yeah and it just you know kind of you know gradually from there worked up to a road mechanic and uh tire changer and um that's kind of where it all started so when i were you were a window washer i guess i would come around the car and go ahead and throw the jack in her and then you would back away is that what it was exactly like i had to tuck up as as close as close as you could to the to the car stay out of your way yeah didn't want to make you mad no uh-uh. <laughs> those were intense moments you know they I mean? were they are they, they yes. still are they still are sure no no come on they were it was 22 24 seconds oh, no, then. No, no, i no. could i could run up and take a picture <laughs> in a pit and go to the back of the car and take a picture now it's 13 yeah. seconds it's like get in there and get one picture and those oh guys, yeah oh, it's oh, amazing. Yeah. and before yeah. they you know made all the major modifications i mean they were they were doing 11 second stops yeah you know yeah. constantly yeah. Um, fortunately, I think my really, my tire changing career for professionally kind of, you know, started to end when the, the athlete started to show up. Right. Um, and well, you were Jeff Gordon's. Tire I did. Changing. I did. Yeah. I changed tires for Jeff Gordon in yeah. 04 and 05. Yeah. Um, probably my most, um, successful years as far as being a tire changer, uh, won the Daytona 500, the Brickyard. Uh, 400 uh we didn't get a championship did no. you get the championship with vickers no i got the championship well technically i have six of championships with jimmy six of his seven okay um because the way it was structured we, we changed tires on the 24 you know on race day but during the week we worked on both cars yeah and in our shop it was the 24 48 right um so though my tenure with hendrix was by far my most successful, um, you know, part of my career, uh, as far as, you know, what I have to show for it. Um, and really I was just riding the bus. I mean, I just happened to be in the right place at the right time and, uh, got to be around a lot of really, really cool people and got to experience a lot of, a lot of good things. So when we worked together at Sabco, I remember you getting, um, well, let's back up a little bit first. Okay. You were at 96, you were with Sabco and then yep. we went to Andy with Kyle and he hit the wall. Yes. And he yes. blew a right front tire. Do you remember one of the funniest stories that came out of that? Yes, I think so. And I had, are I had you going to tell it? You want me to tell it? Uh, how about you tell it? And <laughs> okay. I'll add in as needed. <laughs> and I, I remember that to this day because, you know, we, we go down there and we were actually running really good. I think we were, yeah, you second, know, second. second, second time, yeah. And, um, uh, we ended up cutting a tire down. I think uh, a lot of the, the cars were, were cutting the aprons and getting into the grass. And one of the, the spikes they, they used to hold down some of the artificial turf or the turf, uh, you know, cut our tire down. Long story short, hits the fence. And back then, you know, it didn't take much for a driver to be out. You know, safety uh, wasn't what it was. Mm-hmm. So he takes a hit, pretty hard hit. They put him on the stretcher, put him on the ambulance, you know. We come to find out that we're going to have to have a replacement driver, and I can't remember who drove for us. For- oh, we had Todd Bodine probably. I think the next race may have been Watkins Glen, uh, and Todd Bodine was. It might have been. I, I can't remember. And but we, I, and yeah. But what I do remember is when Kyle Petty um, came into the shop, and he was kind of telling us about it, and he said, uh, you know, they pulled me out of the car, and, and uh, they got me on the stretcher, and every time they, they go to lift the stretcher up, I'd start <laughs> screaming. So yeah. they put me right back down. <laughs> So they'd wait a couple seconds. You all right? You all right? He said, before I could say anything, they would pick me up again. I'd start screaming. They put me right back down. He said, they did this about three times. He said, finally, finally, I got out. You're standing on my ponytail. Yeah. So, <laughs> yep, yep. so every time That's they tried right. to lift him up, they, it's one, uh, of the, one of the medical <laughs> people was standing right on his ponytail. So that's what yes. I remember from, from that Brickyard race, right. which I think was my first Brickyard race. Yes. And, and so also, do you remember what we did whenever he wrecked and he was out? So we ended I up, do. So you and I went. I think it was just me and you. And, and Andy Stapp. And Andy Stapp. Okay. Yep. I sent him the link to tonight. So oh, maybe he's you? watching. So I, you know, I never had any cash on me. I mean, I was married. I mean, that's kind of the way it is. So anyway, I, uh, we got to the, to, to the museum, mm-hmm. decided we're going to go walk through there. And While the race is going on. Yeah. The race is going on. We had a long race race to go still. And so I had on my race day shirt. So I, I wanted a shirt 
And I think that was also the way I was going to get in. And, and so the lady working there, her name was Donna Stroud. And she said, uh, she sent me pictures and she sent some pictures of me and you. And I've got some here on my show too. No kidding. And one of them was us inside there. And she wanted a picture and um, she took it and I have my eyes closed or whatever. And I've got that one somewhere. So anyway, I took my shirt and I said, hey, how would you like this shirt? It's our Red Race Day Team Tabco. Yep. And I said, I would like to have that shirt. I said, but I, I'm not asking you to change it, of course, right here. I'm just saying, how about we just swap, and then I get to go in the museum, too. So, anyway, she went, and she's like, oh, yeah. So, she went and took – somehow, we ended up swapping shirts. Not at the same time, whatever, nothing <laughs> like that. I had a I had a gym bag that I carried around with me. So, um, so anyway, I got a nice Brickyard T-shirt out of the deal, and we got to go walk around inside the Brickyard. So, I do remember that. Mm-hmm. It was pretty amazing all the old cars and all the history and we got to go if yes. i remember correctly we got to go places where the normal public didn't get to go yes Am i remember correctly yes and i didn't have a camera i didn't even have a cell phone back then mm. so and this was during bad. the race 96. when your car was on the track no yeah, no no, no we were out we were, <laughs> we were done no that car was done man he okay. Kyle broke his leg and i was trying to picture <laughs> crew chief going, where did those guys go oh yes <laughs> we're passing time yes i see the air go sit on the bus and yeah, and wait. whatever. Yeah, and wait. So, uh, but yeah, it was a good time. That was an interesting trip. So and you do have several of your Sabco oh, folks cool. tuned in. You've oh, got no. Jeff. Jeff says, "What's up?" Tell him, "Poor ass said, what's up." Me and Scott work for Mike and David. And then you got Kenny Cole's back, Carbon Kenny. Oh yeah, Kenny. Mm-hmm. He lives Bob here in Patterson. Statesville, actually. Yep, Bob Patterson. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bob, uh, Jeff says, Bob, were you the race day pit set up, Bob? He's asking Bob on here. Yeah. Bob says, yep, that was him. <laughs> there you go. You've also got tuned in. You've got Dickie Dennis. You've got Linda Jinks, Don Clark, um, Scott Trevison. He's saying hello from Beer I-75. Beer oh, that's uh, Jeff Porras. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We, we we're going to give a shout out to Jeff today. I actually got to talk yeah. to him on the phone today. Yeah, so there you go. That's cool. Yep. Yeah, and good, you got R.D. Ford you. tuned in as well. All right, R.D. Ford's up in New Hampshire. Yes, you finally got it right. I did. Instead of <laughs> Michigan, I always want to say Michigan. <laughs> All right, so yeah. I'm training him. I'm yeah. trying. Very good. Ford, Michigan, you know, it's... A- yeah, <laughs> they're all the same. It's all north of the equator or whatever. Well, we're north of the equator. North but anyway, of South Carolina. Yes. <laughs> all right, so you know, Car- uh, Kenny Colts back, Carbon Kenny. Yep. I, when he, the first thing when he, Kenny's name comes up that I remember, he was the first one, first time I had ever seen a shifter cart. Oh, yes. Remember yes. that? Yeah, and it was I, a and I, it 500. Was, yeah, it was a twin engine or was it just a 500? Yeah. I can't remember. But, yeah. I, you know, being a kid from around here, we didn't have that kind of stuff. And mm-hmm. him coming from California, you know, that was, that, that was you know, yeah. to me like a spaceship. Yeah. Yeah, we took it to Millbridge and he takes out the laptop and hooks up to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what? And then, uh, yeah, I, and Ivan Scopatone had it. Oh, Ivan Scopatone. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of those guys, yeah. things worth noting, mm-hmm. came with Robbie Gordon. That's right. Yep. And uh, when uh, when Robbie Gordon came, and I need to give a shout out to Donnie Fair, who is no mm-hmm. longer with us. Yeah, but um, he was another one of them fellows in my life that that always stands out. That that you know kind of helped show me the way. And, and and you know, a lot of those guys from California came. You know, they were really talented. Yeah. Um, and I learned a lot from those guys. Mm-hmm. And um, so. You know, I, I was hated. I hated to hear the passing of Donnie. Yeah. Um, I think I saw a couple pictures of him last night when I was looking through it. But he was one of those guys that just, like I said, sticks out in my mind for, you know, just you just remember as you get older, you know, the influence they had on you yeah. Yeah. as you were younger. You know, yeah. sure. he was the guy he, they brought him in at Savco and he was the, uh, the fab shop foreman. And, and he was uh, he was always very like kind of easy going, you know, he just uh just all around great guy. Yep. And I had brought uh, Brian Henry. He yes. moved up from Atlanta. And I said, hey, I got this guy that he works in a machine shop. And he's a good guy. I think you'll probably like him. So he like hired him immediately and he come right in and he still works at Ganassi. So, I mean, he's, is Brian still there? He's still there. Brian, I all I, these Brian Henry. Yeah. He, he does my taxes. He's my tax oh, guy. Oh, that must be a different, I think it's a different <laughs> guy. You're not going to believe it, David, but I, honestly, I kid, I kid you not, he's got one eye. 
Oh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, he just moved to New York. He's got one good eye. You know, I need that guy to do my taxes. <laughs> oh, he's, he's good. He's yes. so good when he moved to New York. I yes. send him my taxes in the mail. He does them. I'm not, no yeah, kidding. He's that good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jimmy Colesbeck says that was a Honda 250 yes. CC. Oh, it was a 250. It's a 250. Okay. Somebody had a 500 anyway. That was another story. But yeah, Bob his, Patterson that says was fast car. Ivan took us to a shifter cart track on yes. a West Coast trip. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah, so Ivan must have thought. So Ivan had a 125, if I'm not mistaken, or he had one of those little Yamaha. Well, it was something. It was definitely less than what Kenny had. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and another guy we lost recently, last week, Skip Eiler. Remember him? Skip Eiler. He was with, oh, uh, he worked shucks. at Savco. You remember him? He worked yeah. at a six car for many years. I got a picture of him. I'll have to show you. Is he the guy that had the he, brain? Yeah, he had uh, brain cancer, I guess it was. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, he was I can't, a, I can't was picture him. When are we going to see I got these a picture pictures? Of him. Wait, I remember. Yeah, Skip. I've got he one in my a, phone. He was we'll our car break. chief for a while, right? Yeah, he was. Yes, he was. Yes, yeah. no kidding. Yeah, as soon as, as soon as you see the picture of him, you'll know. Yeah, I know exactly who he was. Exactly who I'm talking about. So, um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to play some commercials right quick, and then we'll, we will come right back and and then we will uh, continue on with racing roots with ham. If you're just now tuning in, we got Mike Atwell, who was a longtime NASCAR. How many years did you work in NASCAR now, you think? Mm, it's 96 to... 25 yeah. years. 25 years, yeah. Yeah, at least, yeah. Okay, 25 so yeah, years, yeah. 25 years for, for Savco uh, and then well, Hendricks. No, and before that. DEI. Yeah, well, yeah. Almost 30. Count those, so. yeah. All right, so we'll be right back after the commercials. 550 and 92.9 WAME Statesville. I can't picture who's summertime, summertime, some, some, summertime, 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 some, some, some. Off the street and right now I need that extra car truck or SUV that's sitting in the driveway that you're not driving come bring it let me look at it I will pay you cash on the spot get rid of that extra vehicle at Randy Marion Chevrolet in Statesville or Randy Marion Ford Lincoln we need your vehicle today all right we're back on racing routes with ham right here on the 550 a.m. and 92.9 fm so if you're driving down the road and you start to lose us you can switch over to 550 a.m. or if you want to go online you can go on the TuneIn app and look up WAME or WAMERadio.com and pick us up as well. So we got Mike Atwell in here who is a 25-year NASCAR employee, and I worked with him at Sapco. He went on and worked at Hendrix. So when you left Sapco, I'm jumping forward just a little bit, and we kind of go back. But I remember you, one day you said that you were going to go work for Hendrix. But uh, well, Let's back up. Yes, so the, when I was at Sapco, uh, I got the opportunity to go to DEI. And uh, – so that's where I went, and I had the opportunity to uh, change tires and work with Steve Park, which was another, another. Uh, there you go. Thank you. <clears throat> that was another fun point in my career, fun time in my career. I um, forgot about that. This, the, yeah. The uh, times. Yeah, it was it was interesting. You know, I was there when uh, Big E got killed. Yeah. Um, I got to be a part of Win in Rockingham with Steve Park. Yeah. You know, which is you know probably one of my most memorable wins i mean sure you know that was a very emotional week yeah uh, very emotional day and uh something that you know this is one of those things you'll just never forget mm -hmm. you know yeah for sure living through that um and i just about went 
I had went over there and I've told this story. I'm not going to tell the whole story, but anyway, long story short, I had went out and tried for to be the Jackman for Michael Waltrip that year, but it looks like it turned out. It was just kind of like to get their Jackman, who was a very nice guy. And I knew the guy when I got there and I'm like, he's here. Why is he here? I can't remember. Cause I know Greg Osborne went over there. Scott Eggleston was a crew chief. Yeah. He's the one that called me. Yeah. And so, but hey, I can't do you remember who jacked. I think, but Greg changed fronts, didn't he? Greg Osborne. Uh, but yeah, but that day I'm not sure he was changing because hmm. I didn't. Those other guys, I remember traveling with them, but yeah, I didn't know them very well. Gotcha. So, but anyway, that's that's a long story short. But so, yeah, so there was a possibility that I could have went that year. But how? When did you start? What year did you start at DEI? So that would have been two. So. Biggie passed away. Please correct me if I'm wrong. One. 2001, yes. correct? Um, so I think I went there in 2000. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And that's where I got my very first win with mm -hmm. uh, Steve Park at Watkins Glen, uh, which was, was very cool. Yeah. And, you know, obviously my second win at Rockingham. Now, Steve, when did he get uh, – so I remember him riding around. I believe it was Darlington, yes. if I'm not mistaken. Yes, we were at Darlington. Uh, at the time, I was on the road crew. And, um, you know, back then we had a morning practice and then we had happy hour. And in between on Saturdays, they usually ran the, the Bush race, the Bush series at the time, I think it was called. Yes. And he was uh, on the back stretch in uh, number 31 wheeling car. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Yeah. And it was just a fluke deal. Um, the way the steering couplers are on those cars, they have a tendency to, to go over center. And, and when that happens, they don't lock. So a common thing to tell the driver before the green flag is, hey, you know, tighten your belts back, check your steering wheel, we're getting ready to go green. Mm -hmm. Well, we got the steering or the seat belts checked, and when he went to check the steering wheel, it came off. Oh yeah. And you know the way the setup are on these cars with all the caster split, it just mm -hmm. instantly turned left. Yeah. And I believe Larry Foyt, uh, he was coming up on the inside, you know. I think because he was able to make it, you know, come back around to tail end the longest line. And he was not running full speed, but he was running pretty quick. And mm -hmm. when Steve Park's car turned left, it got Steve right in the driver's side. Mm. And, you know, back then, you know, we ran a flimsy little headrest, no Hans device. Yeah. I mean, it was, you know, we thought we were pretty safe at the time, but, you know, obviously what we know now. Um, so it was just a bad deal. Yeah. And, um, so and then after that, you know, um, we had we put Kenny Wallace in the car, and um, and then Steve came back, and then I actually got the opportunity to go back to Canassi. We went from Sabco to Canassi, and uh, changed tires on uh, Sterling Marlin's car. Yes, yep. Because uh, I left Canassi's because he asked. He said, "If you want to stay, you're going to have to work on cars." And I was already pretty heavy into you know six years into doing engines at that point. So that day that Seapart was in that accident, I was there. On the back stretch in the eleven car, okay, the channel lock yep. car. So, oh yeah, yeah, the old channel lock car. Yeah, yeah Armando Fitz and them guys. Uh, so that team. <clears throat> All right, so you're so you were at Ganassi. You went back to Ganassi. Yeah, went back to Ganassi, um, and I stayed there. I would have honestly, I never probably would have left. I really enjoyed working at Ganassi, mm -hmm. um, but it was the opportunity to go to Hendricks, go change on the twenty four. Uh, but some of the fun I got to do at, at Ganassi was. Um, we actually got to win with Jamie McMurray, and yep. that was – it was his – technically his second cup start, but his first one was Talladega. Um, but really his first uh, mile-and-a-half track at Charlotte, we ended okay, up winning. Okay, 600. Uh, well, it was the 500. The 500. Yeah, now, was, was that after Sterling got hurt? Yes, he got hurt. Okay. And, right um, after. Yeah. And well, so I remember put, that because that was – that's when he was dating Cielo, the Miss Winston girl. I yeah. remember we were talking before the race, and he was kind of like nervous. But that car, he took off, and that was amazing. Yeah, that was now, that was definitely unexpected. Yeah. <laughs> to well, back you guys, just to, back then, if the car was set up, it was set up. You know what I right? mean? Yeah. It really made a big difference. Oh, so. absolutely. Well, to back up just a few minutes there, uh, you you've seen Steve Hart, Phil. You've talked to Steve Hart. Oh yeah. A couple times, I guess over past several months yeah oh yeah he's doing mm -hmm. great he's he's got his own business over in mooresville right there on 150 yep. off exit 36 bulbs and batteries or yep. batteries and bulbs one yep. of those he's right yeah chain store he's got a huge store there yeah we're uh hoping to get him in here yeah soon. he soon was yeah. gonna be on a month or two ago and he and his son J Jaden were headed down to florida to relax and get away so i've been mm -hmm. I have to get a stop by and have him come in soon we we had a lot of fun with him. Oh, he yeah. was Great definitely guy. one of the the best drivers I had the the fortune of working with. And uh, 
you know, yes. Uh, yeah, that was Watkins Glen. One of my yeah. favorite pictures yeah. ever, Steve. And he's got one oh, of those yeah. on his wall in his basement. Yeah. We, um, cool. <clears throat> after we won the Rockingham race um, with Steve, I'm sure everybody knows Kevin Mannion or Bono. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. And that one car, our road crew, was probably one of the tightest road crews I ever got to work yeah. work with. And uh, we just all worked really well together. But <clears throat> something I remember from that from that race, you know, we, we, we get done with the race and uh, we get everything packed up and we're headed home. And Bono's driving the van. Back then, you know, you drove to Rockingham. Yes. And we used to drove in a 15-passenger van. And so the whole team, you know, rides in the van. And uh, so every stoplight that we got to, if there was a car beside us, Bono would make the person beside us roll the window down and ask them, you know who won Rockingham? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yes. they'd go Steve Park. And he'd yeah. go, you damn right we did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So that, that was a very cool experience and, and another good memory. Yeah, that is cool. Here's uh here's the picture I took at Rockingham that day. I was behind the car when he That's told me. yeah, if you look, I think the bottom left, that's me, yeah. All right, yeah. so that's uh, Steve Park. Uh, what do you call that whenever you're uh, if people are holding you uh, up in your dive. crowd circle? Yeah, you, what do you call that? Crowd, crowd dive. Crowd, crowd dive. Dive yeah. into the mosh pit, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And Phil was there to take that picture, capture yeah. that moment in time. Well, I don't know why I just decided to go behind all the crew guys because, you know, and yeah. it was lucky because he got out and jumped right at you guys, and I got that picture of the sun's behind him. He's got that three hat on. There you yeah. Go. Now, was... remember, Phil, you got a little camera right in front of you. Oh, that that's you can right. always show that to our to our listeners here. And if you're listening on the radio and you'd like to tune in and watch that line up us right. here, um, it's it's yeah, that's good. You can uh, watch that on DHAM I am on YouTube and see us here live in the Randy Marion studio. And I'm actually going to put some pictures on here in just a minute. And some of these are the ones that well, when Mike and I traveled, I guess that's the proper way to say it. Mike yes. And I, whenever we travel together, but we're going to finish through your story first, though. So you get you were at uh, Ganassi's and then, yeah. but but what I was going to say was whenever we were working together at Sabco, I remember you saying you were going to go work somewhere. You were going to go work to Henry and then. Oh, you it. know what? Now that you say, I was, yes. you know, that's correct. I actually had a job offer to go to the twenty five car, mm -hmm. and um, at the time I just didn't didn't feel right. Uh, yeah, I did. I didn't want to leave, um, so I, I turned it down. And then, um, then you know, Ty Norris at the time at Sabco was our team manager, I believe. Yeah, he was. And uh, then when he went over to DEI, you know, that's kind of how I ended up over there. Um, so, yeah, just, you know, went over to DEI and then yeah. went back to Canassi. Yeah. And then got the opportunity to go to Hendrix. Um, and like I said, that was that was an experience. It was a very good experience. Rick Hendrick is, is a wonderful boss to work for. I got, I'm sure I got a lot of good stories and you know, from there, a lot of good memories. Um, but yeah, I always thought if I, if I could go to work somewhere, you know, cause I was in that era of the days of thunder, you know, 1990s. And then I was working at the dealership on independence Boulevard and I'd see Rick Hendrick over there. City Chevrolet was right across the street from where I work and all that stuff. But you know, the other one was the Yates family, whether I would go to the Yates which back then, you know, Ford was like the dark side, I guess. But I, I turned out to love Ford, so I was there 16 years. Wow! But I didn't it was either, you were there that long. Yeah, I was. Yep, 16 years. No so kidding. About the same 20, about 10 years with with Chevrolet, and then that long with Ford. So yeah. All right. So then you went to, you were at Hendrix for how many years did you say? I was at Hendrix for 12 years. Okay. Um, in 04 and 05, uh, a mechanic in the shop and rear tire changer. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, they made a change, but I didn't, you know, at that point in my career, I was kind of over the change in tires thing. Um, yeah. So they decided to make a change when Stevie LaTarte came on, but I just really enjoyed working at Hendrix and, you know, had some opportunities to go other places, but I, I knew we were going to be successful. And at the end of the day, the goal was to win championships. Um, so I stayed on and, um, you know, we got our first championship with Jimmy uh, I believe it was, you're going to have to correct me on 06. this. 06. 06. Yeah. Um, and then I was fortunate enough, I traveled uh, as his interior uh, mechanic in 09. So I got to, to win a championship that way. Um, but yeah, pretty much just, you know, rode that wave until, um, you know, I was, it was, it was time to make a change. 
and we, me and my wife, uh, we had a lot of, you know, heart to heart discussions and we decided to open up our own fab shop. And we, we did that successfully for five years. And, um, and now that we're getting older and we're, you know, wanting to spend more time, our girls are getting older. Wow. We decided to, uh, to kind of downsize and, you know, and be honest, I missed racing. Uh, so I got the opportunity to 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 team up with uh, Billy Glavin and JR3 Motorsports, and um, and and we're not NASCAR, um, but we do run in the IMSA uh, road racing series, and we mainly do the it's the uh, Michelin Prototype Challenge. So that's it's been a I mean I I've never experienced road racing, mm -hmm. um, so it's 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 a completely different world. I mean it's. Yeah. It's chaos. I mean, like where you know how it was in NASCAR, where you know pit road, you roll your pit box out, and everything uh -huh. you do, you do by hand. On that IMSA stuff, there's golf carts, scooters, bicycles, oh, yeah. motorcycles. I yeah. mean, everything's going every different direction. Um, 2019, I did the photography for that Caterpillar team with, with the four drivers, the female drivers. Yep. IMSA was amazing. <laughs> I mean, I was walking back to the pits somewhere, and some fans are like, "You need a ride?" I'm like, "Yeah." They're like, "Where are you going?" I'm like to pit road like you said the golf cart beer in hand they drive right into the pits right through the garage to pit road it's no problem at all and everybody everything flows yeah absolutely. everything really works well but it's quite quite an experience it is and i mean i was excited to go to tracks i'd never been to that you exactly. know canadian motorsports park in, in atlanta and you know oh it was i had a ball sure, yeah really it's it, you know to go to some of these places and uh to sebring uh, yeah, mid Ohio. Oh, I know Sebring was. Uh, a, you know, they warned me about Sebring, and they took me into the areas they, you know, and I'm like, well, I've been to Talladega, so you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it just you know the whole history behind yeah. the track, and, and, yep. and it, so it's it's been an awesome experience, and yep. um, like I said, right now we're doing the the prototype challenge. Um, don't know how much I can divulge, but there's talk of doing the full IMSA, you know, with our uh, with our cars. Um, at least a couple races, so it's it's been quite an experience. Well, I think IMSA, who Jim France has a lot of control over, I think they're going to try to merge that closer with NASCAR through the whole thing. So you're going to see a lot of that companion races running with NASCAR and IMSA in the future, and 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 it is exciting racing because I always felt like, well, NASCAR doesn't really look so much like the cars on the tr road anymore, but those IMSA cars look like the cars, the Acuras. Yes. I mean, they're just really badass looking. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's different coming from the, the NASCAR yeah. uh, standpoint, seeing a, the cars that we built, you know, from uh, the tubings on the rack, you know, and then we make yep, a car right. to where these are, you know, factory yeah. cars yep. that are slated to be race cars. Yep. Um, and I could definitely see the appeal um, for NASCAR kind of want to, to head that direction. Yeah. Um, the, the single lugs, you know, yeah. I... I Change, changing tires on this uh, IMSA car and the single lug was a, it was a hard thing for me to kind of get used to. Uh, it's a little bit different, but it'll be interesting to see how the the pit crews you know adjust yeah, to that. Sure. You know next yeah. year. Well, let's go into this uh, slide show I've been talking about. Okay. That pretty pretty much goes through our through your whole pretty much your history in NASCAR. So I don't know if you can all right see these. And of course, if you're listening on the radio, you can't see these, but. I'll just kind of talk about them a little bit, but it was, uh, so I believe this was at uh, Dover, maybe you and I were sitting there, well, actually. All right, so it's scrolling through a little bit further, faster than I want to. Um, I'm going to go, well, I said I was. All right, so let's start back over. So this, this picture right here, can you see this one? We are at, actually, let me do this. Well, this is yeah. the one you talk about yeah. women. Talking well, about women. it's, uh, oh, <laughs> yeah. All right, so yeah, we're. All right, so uh, this one. There's little Mikey. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was so young. Yeah, yeah, so young. You so I believe we're at Dover babies. right there. We're sitting on the pit box. Dover was a long 500-mile, uh, 500-lap race, you know. Yes. And, Indeed. And so we're sitting there uh, chilling on the end of the pit box and at Dover. That's there we the brickyard. Are. Yep. Yep. That's the brickyard, and we've got to uh, – oops. I should start back over. I was going to say we had Michelle. There we go. Let's go back. All right. Yeah, I, I – 
Dover again, I guess. That is Dover, and I know we were we were having a conversation. I don't exactly remember the details. I remember. I was telling you don't get married. But this, <laughs> is, this is uh, this was the first time now. <laughs> so, yes, yes. And if you're listening, my yeah. love, Lindy, we've yes. been happily married for 17 years now. Uh, yes. So, but uh, so yeah. this was the this was pre. Yes, that Lindy. was uh, that was round one, it, but didn't work out so well. But yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. Siri's yes. talking to. And I'm not, and I'm, and I'm not, uh, you know, saying I was right or anything. I'm totally not saying that. No, but well, I'm just telling you, we were joking about were right. it. I mean, we were. <laughs> <laughs> you were absolutely right. <laughs> yeah, Sometimes so, you just gotta learn the hard way, I guess. Though. Yeah, that's it. So, yeah, we, and at that point, we were. I was the Jack Man for Nemechek, and you were tire changer for Joe Nemechek. That was yep. 97, I guess it would have been, right? 97? Sounds about right. Yeah. 97, 98, yep. Well, 98, we were with, with Sterling. Okay, so that would have been 97. Yeah, that was the year that we had Robbie Gordon, and we ended up swapping pit crews halfway through the season. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I've now we I've actually worn we, that we, fire suit, too. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so that, all right, so we we're still have it, on. so no, I've okay. worn it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and this is <laughs> it. NASCAR Hall of Fame. <laughs> Indianapolis Motor Speedway. There's big country sitting behind you, and there's Michelle Greth over here to my right. And this was a picture taken by Donna up in Indianapolis. That oh, okay. She worked in the, the gift shop every year. And somehow she found me and sent, sent me pictures. I tell you, if, uh, if for a couple nobody's ever been to, to, to the brickyard, I mean, that's yeah. just the, the history there and the, the emotion when you walk into the track. And, I mean, it's if you're a racer, like, you know, that's, that's yes. kind of your – yeah, it, it you get that feeling, that ambiance. You always wait to go there, and I'm just personally speaking as a photographer. I couldn't wait not to come back. Right, <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. they they really didn't like NASCAR there. I always felt like that we were encroaching on the indie sacred area. You know what I mean? I always just thought they were, you know. I always joked around that when you retired in Indianapolis, you got a yellow shirt and a whistle. <laughs> <laughs> well, funny story about that, because I'm not very smart sometimes, at Daytona. Remember when you had oh. the, everybody, they had the little visor, or the vest on, they would park you in the infield? Yeah. And it had Parker on it. I'm like, why is everybody's name Parker here? Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. yes. Yeah. Finally, somebody said, you idiot, oh, That's, they're Parkers for the car. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I get it. I get it. That's funny. Hey, Jeff, Jeff Forrest just sent me a couple of pictures, and uh, these are really cool. I've not ever seen these before. There's me, and then or, on the Show back the side, camera, there's you. Dave. Well, I, that, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but yeah, Nate. Uh, I, here, I might have to put those on some other way. But anyway, so we're going to keep looking at these. We got uh, this was Indianapolis, as I mentioned. And then the next one here, this is also at Indy. But this is with – that was Indy, right? Sterling uh, was the driver uh, then. And this would have been 99. With Brooks and Dunn. Brooks and Dunn car. Brooks and Dunn, Kicks Brooks and Ronnie Dunn were there with us as well. And Scott, the beer man, he's mm -hmm. over here on the very end. I'm still only seeing the third Bob picture, Patterson. and that's it. Oh, really? Well, it, yeah. you're a little bit behind it's on the – yeah, oh, it's there, a delay. Okay, okay. Yeah. So now we're seeing the Brooks and Dunn car, the 40 car with right. Sterling Martin, Felix Sabatis at the back, Scott Eggleston, Big Country, and then so on and so forth. You can Big see John Brooke, Yoke in the middle. Brooks and Dunn are in there, yeah. Yeah, you can see him right in there. So uh, Bob Patterson, who was tuned in as well, he's in this picture. And he's right beside Jeff Boris, right? Yeah. Who is right beside me, and Mikey's right beside me on my left. I called you Mikey. Funny story about Jeff. I remember, you know, mm -hmm. he, 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 came, he was a California kid. You know, yes. He's still out in California. Mm -hmm. So uh, when he came to work for us, he came to work for us in the cylinder head shop, and uh, he tried to try to jack first, correct? I believe so. And but, um, we were already amply covered with that, I right? Think. So he no, ended up kidding, carrying not... tires for me, and yes. um, that's where me and him really, you know, formed a relationship. And you know, here's a kid straight out from California, never been to a NASCAR race in his whole life, and his first race is a Daytona 500. Yeah, how about that? Yeah, yes. so that's one yeah. thing that always sticks out. But uh, Jeff's a very good friend of ours. He was actually in me and Lindy's wedding. Um, so, like I said, another shout out to him. Got to talk to him today on the phone, and it sounds like him and his family's doing really well. So that's good. Yeah, good deal. Yeah, so we uh, we were just talking a little bit back and forth here. So, whenever uh, my first race was the Daytona, well, it was the Gatorade one twenty fives, one fifties, whatever. Yep. But that wasn't my first race actually as a Jackman. But I had traveled in 95, so that gave me some time to get used to working, doing the pit sign and, right. you know, that kind of stuff, sitting up the pits and all that good stuff. Bob Patterson says the uh, Brooks and Dunn pictures has uh, David, Mike, Jeff Forrest, and Travis and, and me in there. 
That's right. Is that Sterling that's barely on they the right court. side? Yeah, that's him. Yeah, and it was it's nice only... of you to include him just to squeeze him in Here. there. <laughs> See, <laughs> is that a little bit better? <laughs> I squeeze him out of. Well, here's the deal. That picture is is He's a longer. Like... It's, it's just his head. Yeah. So this photographer, <laughs> the photographer that took this picture didn't know what he was doing. No so. way. No. Because it it, no, that, that angle's feel? wrong. No, no, no. No, I'd say not. It was more like an 8 <laughs> by 12 picture is what it ended well, up being. Well, there's Sterling's whole body. He has, does have a torso. I moved it over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had him cut off a little bit. Yeah, so that was Yeah, a, that, that's not time. composed right. You got Sterling way on oh. the right. You got Brooks way on the left. And you got Dunn in the middle. Yeah. It's... Shouldn't the Dunn and Brooks and Marlin photographer should have been maybe to the left a little bit more centered. I, don't I know. showed I showed that picture to, to my girls last night and I said, Yeah, Brooks and Dunn oh, are in it. And there she goes, Yeah, yeah, Cheyenne, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's one right there and right there. And I pointed the pictures on the car. I'm like, No, oh. they actually in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Mm. Yeah, so we're all right, so we're looking at the, the Brooks and Dunn car. Now this is a picture oh, of that's us. a good one. Yeah, we're lined up on Pit Road at Indianapolis Speedway in ninety six. That's the one where Kyle uh, that is. This yep. would have been before the race started. Yep. And we had uh, Bob Romano, who was our pilot. Yes. Still flying. Is he? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. I talked to Big John Yook. He's there. He's still cooking for uh, Stuart, Stuart Haas. Haas. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yep. And, uh, yeah, and Suddy, Jim Sutton, still over at Nassie. He'll what, never. He's a lifer. 30-something years. Yep. Suddy was place. another one of those guys in my life that was kind of my yeah. protege. And, is that and, hair on Big John's head? It's just yeah. a little there? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. That's it. And there's Mikey. So, and there's, uh, and then there's me on the end. I, think uh, I still got those shirts. Dave Sharpentier. Dave Sharpentier, yep. Yeah. All right. And let's see. We'll scroll on to the next one. Right. Dave Sharpentier, he looks like a. a, a well, he was, uh, yeah. He what kind of re rescue ranger or whatever it is. There you <laughs> oh, I know. He was, he was uh, one of the, the first guys to the whole in, the engineering, you know, evolution of NASCAR. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, back when it was, it was just so much the good old boys. And, um, you know, he came in and, you know, one of the first guys we hired just as an engineer. Yeah. Yep, yep. He made the big bucks. And he was, uh, let's see, he was, Ricky Rudd was, they were getting into it. He was. He broke contract or something. Yeah, there, so there I remember was there was some kind of, is that some my buddy kind of issue. Hard, is that my yeah. buddy Hard Times? Hard Times, yeah. Is there him there? That's him. Sulking. Yeah. That's, you you <laughs> got a Hard <laughs> Times story? Do you ever give you a Hard uh, Time? Oh, I really liked Hard hey, Times. Hey, buddy. Yeah. He was from my hometown. I, I, me and Hard Times got the same insurance guy. How about that? Oh, Still? About that? Still. Whoa. And okay. I just met with my insurance fellow this past week, and wow. Hard Times came up. Oh, okay, because yep. his bro younger brother, Tommy, Tried to get a hold of me to go to lunch with him and Jerry last week. And no I'm like, kidding. Yeah, because yeah, I'm from Jerry's hometown. That's where McLaughlin's from. Oh, okay. Upstate New York. All right, yeah. so this picture, I believe, is this, uh, let's see, where was this? California? Michigan. Michigan. Okay. Michigan. All right. So there's uh, our usual lineup. We're all lined up there. The same as the other picture. Yeah, that's that's a much year. better photo. You know, the yeah, aspect of the grandstands. Yeah, it looks like Atlanta. And, yeah. Yeah, Atlanta, because we're so close to, to from the pit road to the track. Mm -hmm. And then there's the tunnel over there, I believe, or anyway. All right, so there's uh, Big John standing beside me. But now the big question is, is that, and is that Atlanta before they swapped the oh, uh, start-finish line? Right, probably. Because that could have been Robbie yeah. Gordon. Could have been. So, so Jeff says Jeff's it was Atlanta. actually 1999 that, was that we 99. were on Nemechek's crew and got swapped to Sterling's crew. Uh, it was his first year in the pit crew. That's what Jeff is saying. I don't. Ninety nine. I was was with Sterling all year. We were in a black. Now ninety seven. Robbie Gordon came in, right? Yeah. Because Kyle left in after ninety six season. Robbie came in, swapped about halfway through, and then ninety eight. Sterling came in. 98, 99, 2000, mm. 2001. Sterling and Glover. And then I left. Sterling and Glover. That's Tony right. Glover. Yeah. And Glover actually came in before. Sterling, somebody's Siri, Siri keeps, talking. keeps talking. Yeah, so well, just look that up again, Jeff, because I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm pretty sure about this, that at '99 was Sterling. This would be another, because I'll remember the black, the black right. uniforms were '99. So this one, another one, uh, Michigan, I guess. Bob Patterson says that was me next to Jerry when I had some hair left. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I know the feeling. I know the feeling. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna roll through a couple. Yeah, let's see a couple more of these, and we're gonna take another break. Jim yeah, Dooley we're back to the turned in. Oh, what's up, Jim Dooley? You have to go back and watch and look for these pictures again. And I haven't seen the beer man on here. Is he on here yet? He is. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good deal, Scott. All right. So what we're going to do is take a quick break, and we'll be right back to Racing Greets with Ham. We've got Mike Atwell on here with us. So y'all stay tuned, and we'll see you back here in a couple of minutes.
Life. It's hard to keep your floors clean and in good condition. Well, you can rely on Terry's Carpet Care to take care of your home or business so that you can focus on things that are more important. Terry's is your local and trusted floor cleaning service. There's a lot of great looking plants. I mean, we brought in at least three truckloads in the past week and stuff is blooming beautiful. But uh, as of right now, I mean, it's a great time to get out there and plant. Plants really do help to relieve stress. I mean, just taking a walk through your garden, you know, 10, 15 minutes at a time can do wonders for you. Give us your opening hours. Monday through Friday, 8 until 5. And we're open Saturdays now, 8 until 1. We do deliveries, as you mentioned. Deliveries fill up quickly this time of year. If you can give us about a two-day notice that'll ensure that you can get the products you're looking for delivered right to your house so you don't even have to come in we can take care of it over the phone and that's bell landscape supply how do we find you well we're uh, located at 2410 north side drive that is the uh, famous frontage road here in statesville that runs along i-40 uh, in between highway 6490 and 115 uh, look on our website it's belllandscapesupply.com our Facebook page is uh, constantly updated thanks to uh, Bethany there. You'll see all kinds of new products and tips for your lawn. And uh, if you want to do it the old-fashioned way, give us a call. It's uh, 704-253-7010. That's 704-253-7010. Mm, if you've had an accident, what would you do next? We'll take your vehicle to Statesville Collision Center for fast, certified collision repair. They specialize in bodywork, custom paint, collision repair, and much more. Their iCar trained and certified technicians will get your vehicle back to its factory look and specifications. Come meet the friendly, knowledgeable staff at Statesville Collision Center. They work with all insurance companies and guarantee all of the work they perform. Statesville Collision Center, 114 Victory Lane in Statesville, or call 704 881 0410. Blue Harbor Bank is not your typical bank, right, Doug Hendricks? It's a great little bank. We're based out of Mooresville. All of our board of directors, our employees, and the vast majority of our customers are all from right here in Iredale County. So it's a great place to be. We have a great time as a team. The team here in Statesville consists of Jennifer Jolly and Tara Summers. They are the primary customer service folks for business and personal banking. Uh, then we have Tom Kincaid as a commercial banker for this area. We also have the best mortgage banker in the area. That's Lisa Culverd, who many people have worked with at other banks. She's been in the market for over 20 years doing mortgages. And then yours truly, Doug Hendricks. And we have a great time working together. There's no competition between our employees for accounts or whatever. And because of that, then we don't have a lot of the issues that some banks have with people doing things they probably shouldn't do just to make a sale. Blue Harbor Bank with locations in Statesville, Mooresville, and Huntersville. Member FDIC. All right, we're back on Racing Roots with Ham right here. We got Mike Atwell in the Randy Marion studio with us this evening. And Mike worked for, let's see, he worked for, with me at Team Sabco, Sabco Racing, Team Sabco, Chip Ganassi Racing, Hendrick Motorsports, and Dale Earnhardt Incorporated. And I uh, was a tire changer for Jeff Gordon, which is one of the coolest things because I was, I could imagine had been a jackman for Jeff Gordon. I always liked him when I was, before he, when he first started out. Yeah, it was definitely an experience um, to be a part of that. And, you know, I mean, that's a man's a legend, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the funny thing is, you either you either love them or people hate them, especially back then. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, I got to be a part of the the, the Talladega when uh, we just barely beat Junior 
and under the beer caution, cans. And, mm-hmm. you know, and Jeff comes on the radio, and he's like, they're throwing beer cans at yeah. us. Oh, gosh. Yeah, yeah Talladega, man. You, <laughs> yeah. you take an Earnhardt and get the lead. And then ta- oh, they oh. did. That stuff it just was... came raining down out of the stamps. They, once somebody started, it all just started coming. Oh, yeah. The mm-hmm. bottles and cans exploding. And that was, you know, it was kind of a, you know, that was my first win with him. So, you know, it was kind of a, a crazy win to have with him, you know, to, yeah. to, to experience that. Uh, and, and some other things I can remember is, uh, you know, I mean, I'm walking into Richmond. You know, a lot of these tracks we would park because the traffic was, you know, so bad back then. Dover. Right. Dover. Dover. Bristol. You'd pay 60 bucks to park at the Best Buy. Yeah. But you know what I figured out? Never had to pay again. I got a hold of Jeff Green and got me a Best Buy uniform. Yeah. One of those oh. team shirts. And I'd wear that in. They let the team park free. No there kidding. You, you know all the tricks, don't you? Uh, you have to learn it. <laughs> sure. Yeah. But um, I can remember going, walking into Richmond and, you know, rolling in my, my crew shirt on, my backpack, and, um, boy, I thought I was going to get jumped. I mean, there were some people that were really taking yeah. this stuff oh, serious. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't remember who it was, but there was finally a, a couple guys from a couple other teams. You know, they kind of, you know, they kind of crowded around me because they, they felt sorry for me, yeah. and, uh, which I don't blame them. But um, so, yeah, that was, it was a fun time, um, you know, to be able to win the Daytona 500. I mean, that's that's what racing's all about also. Yeah. So I got to win that with him. And then to win the Brickyard 400, uh, um, that was that was an yeah. awesome experience. Yeah. I mean, like you said, there's nothing like at the end of the day just yeah. knowing you wore everybody's butt out, yeah. you know. And yeah. So um, those were some really fun times. Um, and, and I'm just blessed to be able to be a part of it. You know, we had yeah. Robbie Loomis as a crew chief, and uh, yeah. Steve Latart carried tires for me the first year. Yeah. And, you know, I can always remember being up on the wall, and he's like, you need to calm down. You're too serious. You know, <laughs> he'd, right? you know, you know how Stevie is. Yeah. He'd always try to yeah. bring you down a little bit. and um, But, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Latart always reminded me of the father on My Three Sons. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, oh yeah, my <laughs> that's right. Uh, hey, Jana Travison also, and Jim Dooley, he's up in Virginia. But uh, Jana Travison's the uh, the Miss, Mrs. Beer Lady. So, and uh, Jim says, "Hey, Mike, what with those cannons, who can drive a golf ball further? You or Ham? Oh yes. Oh, we were talking about that this morning again on the radio about uh, my my uh, golf ball drive. I've seen his so drive. Well, we're, today, we're, <laughs> you, yeah, man. Billy was talking about that this morning. Today, I might be able to beat you because you only got one eye. Oh, that's true. Yes, my depth perception but, is terrible. Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Any other time, I'm sure I'm he's telling got you, me. he could close his eyes and still hit it 165 miles an hour. <laughs> I don't think I can hit it off the tee box. So. Well, no, he was at about 140 some miles an hour, and I was trying to get 105. You know, <laughs> well, I'm, not we, kidding, uh, I'm not kidding you. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> when we went to uh, we went to a batting range, and it was they was throwing. Uh, the other chillbillies were like, no, nah, I'm not getting in there with these 95 mile an hour balls. So I was like, I'm going to get in there. So then I was swinging and hit, hitting, saying, cling, cling. And then I started laughing because they were just like, man, you got to be kidding me. And then I was just like, they're like, wait, hold, turn around. And then it's under to turn around one arm. And I just put my bat out and went, dink. And we threw around the ball. <laughs> <laughs> That's the funniest thing. Did you- I wasn't even trying at that point because I was laughing and I was carrying on. And I just turned around. <laughs> did you get on the softball deal? Remember we had I, I never yeah. played on it, but we had a lot of the teams they, did. they yeah. started the softball series and they had, shapes, yeah. Well, I did it with Sabco too back yeah. in the day because I had I actually was the team manager for two teams. That's what I thought. I remember yeah. I thought you were part of that. I was in charge of getting all the uniforms and everything from Coors. Yeah. I mean Coors Light was awesome. We had a Coors team and a Coors banquet team. They sent us all the uniforms. Sure. I'm talking nice stuff too. Sure. And bags yeah. to put our bats and balls in. No kidding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we got hooked up with from the Coors team. That was a good time. That's when the sponsors would lay it all oh, out. Yes. Yeah. Remember the parties they would have? Like you'd go to Pocono and, and Miller would close down a bar and he'd come in and drink and oh, you'd bring your hard card. You'd get in and drink all night long. <laughs> I tell you, one of the best sponsors that I have ever been able to be a part of was, was Lowe's Yeah, uh, with Jimmy. I mean, sure. um, the, they, they took their racing so seriously – and and they rewarded us and we had such a blast with those guys um you know every time jimmy would win a race we'd get 480 dollars to lowe's wow how about that i was gonna ask you if you oh, got gift cobalt card. tools but hey gift I mean, cards right yeah wow gift card. yeah jimmy won a lot of races Pretty good. a lot of races yeah so um and they were they did a lot of really neat things for us in the shop um and uh and as far even on the road all the road guys i mean it was it, it was quite an experience. Like, let me put it to you that way. 
Sure. So. Tracy, did you have a Scott comment? Scott Felthausen says he remembers NASCAR versus NHRA safe softball games. He can't remember what charity the proceeds went to. Yeah, I don't know if I was involved in those. I did some charity games. We had like Jason Jarrett come in. We did a home run competition. It was him, me, him, and somebody else. And he won. And I'm like, how the heck did he win? Because he was a, you know, the celebrity of the day, so whatever. <laughs> That's the way that worked out. But anyway, yeah. But I don't remember the NHRA and other stuff. But yes. All right, so whenever you um, – oh, I thought I had another question come in. I do have a question. Go for it's coming it, yeah. in honor of the beer man. Now, there normally is. we ring a bell and you come up with your best Sterling Marlin story, but he says you got one of him and Sterling. You have a story of beer man and Sterling together from somewhere. He's going to have to help me remember to pick out which one and to which one that I can even tell. One that's not R rated. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Well, that... we'll wait for his reply. <laughs> yeah. Scott, Old beer, man. Those were some good times. Scott Felthausen says Winston put on the put those together, David. Oh, okay. Winston. Winston put those together. Yeah. I, I vaguely remember it, but I wasn't involved with those. And uh, Jeff Porras was also, he was sending me pictures of you and him in 99 and the 42. But that was after y'all stayed with the 42 car, if I'm not mistaken. When we did, we did some swapping around. When we did some swapping, I yeah. I stayed with Scott. Yeah, that's what. So it was. where Scott Eggleston yeah. went, I went with him. And I went with Glover. Yeah, I think so. So that's what the deal was. Yeah, that's why it was getting confusing between the years. So, all right. So anyway, did you get the Sterling question? Did you have yeah, your cowbell? I, asking. I asked him Go about that. The so cowbells speaking, in the car. Oh, that's uh, fine. <laughs> speaking of Glover, a, Kit says that that's her maiden Ramonica. name. There you go. Kit Rodriguez says Harmonica. Glover's her maiden name. Yeah. Okay. David Ham. <laughs> what? Kit says her maiden name is Glover. Okay. But she, she's got a different accent than Tony Glover. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. I mean, she, she's cuter than Tony Glover. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you one funny. I'll tell you another funny story about a Glover that I always remember. And, you know, we back in the day, we, you know, we worked our butts off at the track. I mean, they still do today. Oh, yeah. But, you know, we used to, you know, you change at least three motors a weekend. There was no rules on gears, no rules on transmissions. Uh, you didn't know after you qualified the first day if you were going to try for second round. I mean, so we were we hustled. And uh, Tony Glover's rule, when we would go to the racetrack, it was okay to go as fast as you wanted to go to get to the track, no matter what it took. Mm -hmm. So we can get there on time. But at the end of the day... We couldn't drive above 45 miles an hour oh. in the van leaving the track. Is that right? And, I th and Beer Man was our van driver most of the time. Oh, how did that happen? <laughs> so that's a good one for, for, for Beer Man. It was uh, in hard times. And uh, uh, Keith Simmons, anybody remember Keith Simmons? You know, remember Keith? Oh, yeah, the cringe. The cringe. Yeah. I was yeah. going to say, Is there Scott was... says share a cringe story. Yeah. Oh. There you go. Hmm. I don't know if there's any we can share. <laughs> and Bob Patterson says yeah, everybody is, has um, a different accent, accent than Glover. Yeah. Well, that's for sure, yes. And but, Jamie uh, says Tic Tac uh, Glover. Yeah. yeah but that, Glover was soft-spoken, too. I mean, he was quiet somewhat. You never yeah. heard him really yell or talk. Yeah. yeah I, talk one about thing this. I can remember about Cringe um, was he loved his dirt racing. Um, I think he ended up yep. going back to Iowa and, and, and purchasing a track or something yeah, of that nature. But yep. I do remember seeing he had – it was one of the coolest setups I've ever seen. He had an old tilt cab rollback mm -hmm. completely restored that he carried his, his dirt car around on. Wow. And it, it was absolutely beautiful. Yeah. So that's yeah. my one cringe story that I can remember. I think I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know the other one has uh, some, some yeah, ho words and slip, things well, like that. I don't it. know if this is a good <laughs> subject, good or bad subject. Yeah. Wasn't there a car wreck? Um, which one? Sapco? Yes, oh. but that was not with me, obviously. And that was about a year before my time. Yeah. Well, actually, that, that came up in conversation with some friends of mine a couple of weeks ago. Nobody got fatally hurt, right? Or I don't. I can't remember the details, so I would be. I think it was Daytona. Or yes, something. I do remember that. All right. All right. So uh, <laughs> back to the uh, Steve what, what, Steve Knight on with us. Did you mention Steve Knight yet? You remember Steve Knight? Yeah, yeah. He was, he was the parts parts manager. Absolutely. There. And, and um, his original Holman Moody truck. Original Holman Moody truck. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So hi to Steve. I didn't, man. I didn't, oh, and, he, and Kenny Colesbeck says Bob Hill drove it. Bob Hill was, uh, he oh, was, was a he driver. Was he the driver? Yeah, he, he was, was on driver. our setup plate. That's yeah. right. 
Yeah. Yep. I wonder what ever happened with Bob Hill. Where's he? Is he still around? I don't know. Kenny, do you know? He was missing and, a finger or two. I remember that. Yeah. Kenny calls back, says Daytona Van Wreck. Daytona. Yeah. Van Wreck. And then Thank you to Jersey KPIs for breaking oh, yeah. up that awkward moment. Yeah, Jersey, Jersey KPIs. KPIs. <laughs> if you need, uh, speaking of wrecks, if you if you have a boat and you want to just like, wreck yeah. your boat, you want to get a custom boat built from yeah. scratch, 31 to 55 foot, something like that. 66 foot. 66. For the, for the big boy. There. Yeah. So Sign I, me I up for a 66 footer. Big Diablo. Yep. They can hook you up and get you one out on Lake Norman yeah, as well. Yeah, they don't sell just a, in other words, they build custom yachts. Jersey Cape Yachts builds a, Anything you want. They don't, oh, have, they they don't go into here? a showroom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they can all over. Mm, I excellent. mean, but they'll even refurbish an old yacht, restore it, put it all back how you want, set down with Janine and Wayne, and they'll take care of you. Yeah, that's right. All right, so uh, Kenny says that he retired and we got back to the beach. Oh, did you have Janine's phone number there or their numbers? Oh. It's uh, Janine, Jersey, all right, Janine at oh. jerseycapeyachts.com is the email address. Janine with a G E N I N E at Jersey Cape Yachts. So there you go. And then uh, Scott Fellhausen says, so if, if uh, Mr. Atwell here in mm. front of me uh, never got into racing and had to work a real job, what would you be doing today? That, that's a good question. Um, probably something with airplanes. I always airplanes? had a fascination for airplanes and helicopters. Oh, that's um, right. So I actually yeah. did end up getting my private pilot's license uh, probably 12 years ago. How about that? Yeah. You jumped uh, out of a plane, too. I did. Perfectly good airplane. I got a funny story about that one, too. Yes. Hold on. <laughs> hold that. Hold that thought. I'm at, we're going to come right to that. I want to say happy birthday to Chad Hyder. He just tuned in. He's up in Ohio. I believe he's going to come down this weekend and hang out with us some. So happy birthday, Chad. Yeah, Chad. Happy Chad birthday. His happy birthday. Bobby and, Sue. Bobby. And, um, his wife. I don't know about that. No, he's going to bring a friend. And Jana reminds us that was Glenn Funderburg involved with that wreck. Yes. And Glenn's still going to the racetrack, by yes, the way. Yes. Well, when I was going till last year, I'd see Glenn around. And like, we'd look at each other like, oh, are you still here? <laughs> <laughs> Little fossil. Yeah. That's what I would be thinking, too. <laughs> Travis Block. Was it, was it yes. Glenn Funderburg? Travis Block was some of the original guys. There's a couple Bobby that I Kennedy. see. Yeah. I see. I've seen Bobby Kennedy at some of our vintage events. He'll go out well, there. Well, you know, he's got oh, that yeah. barbecue place over there now. Denver. Bobby does. I did not know that. Oh, yeah. It's or called uh, Smokehouse Barbecue in Denver. He's very successful. It's excellent. I'm salivating right really? now. Yeah. Oh, it is. Smokehouse Barbecue in Denver. Well, he needs to send us some. That's hey. the barbecue place. I was trying to remember. Every time I've called him, he's like, "It's excellent." He's had it a couple of years. <laughs> Busy. <laughs> yeah, he's had that for three, four years. Uh, no kidding. Yeah, he hasn't been going to racing. Right. Well, if, if you own a restaurant, right. you're going to be busy. Well, I was yeah. going to say it takes a long time to cook barbecue. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Many hours. Yes. Yeah, so, all right, Mike, right. you jumped out of an airplane. I remember seeing the picture, uh, the video. I'm sorry, it was that um, that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Oh, I That's can't ingrained remember. Ingrained in my head. It's the lady from uh, the Jeffersons. The her son sing this song um yes lenny kravitz oh i lenny I, kravitz I song so it, that was on your video was, i want to get yes. away yeah that's it i want to so, fly sorry. yeah that's right the, that's pretty good i never I don't, <laughs> I maybe only saw the video once or twice because because yeah Corey stock who was our crew chief at the time i went with yeah. him yeah and we, we split the deal to have the camera the son of remo stock and we yeah, split it so that somebody got the the video and then somebody got the the actual pictures. Oh, okay. So and I ended up with the pictures. Oh. But what's what's funny about that story is that was the very first year that we were able to race in Vegas or that we raced in Vegas. Ninety seven. Um, Ninety seven. So when I went out there, Sabco would always fly us out like a day and a half early. So here we are, first time in Vegas. Mm-hmm. Sure. Ready to go. Hammer down. I'm twenty years old. I can't do anything. I'm just walking around <laughs> like there's nothing. I can't do anything. Yeah. And uh, Corey comes up to me. He's like, what are you doing? I'm like, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> he's like, you want to go skydiving? <laughs> Why not? <Yeah>. So, <laughs> oh, man. So we, we drove out, and it was uh, out past Lake Mead. And, um, yeah, I was old enough to skydive, but not old enough to gamble. Mm. So yeah. wow. that's what I always remember about that. <laughs> you should have had a beer in the plane before you went out. So just in case I don't make it to the 21st. I I, I no, it. Mike's, his drink was the Coca-Cola. He wasn't into much anything else. No. Now, no. were you with us that time that um, whenever oh, we were riding through the infield of Talladega and I was driving the van and Ivan was sitting behind me and we had the door open on the side of the van 
and I had the uh, the squirt the windshield washers aimed out <laughs> towards the uh, patrons or whatever. And so I would drive by somebody, and this guy was laid out in this long chair, and I was like, "Oh, he's passed out." And I shot him with the sh- sh- and then he woke up and threw a Pepsi can right in there and it hit Ivan and just splattered all over him. Oh, I can't yes. remember if I was with you or not. <laughs> and I just, I was like, all right, hammer down out of here. <laughs> Old Talladega, uh, that's uh yeah, that was that was that was an place. adventure. You always took a lap on the infield at Talladega at the end of the day. Yes, that was that was uh what people watching at its finest. That mm. was even better than well, what was, hanging out down what was funny Street is you'd get football. probably ten or twelve drivers on a, a flatbed. They'd put them up inside of a truck once during the weekend, usually it used to be. Um, and they'd go driving down that strip there, and all the Talladega, and everybody come running up. They'd be up on top of an elevated truck. <laughs> they better be. Yeah. 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 For sure. Get mobbed. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Oh, yes. Uh, Scott Fellhausen says that barbecue place is, is and welcome is pretty good. And uh, Jeff was saying, yeah, he has his uniform still. So we had those nice jersey to Coors, Coors Light, and all that. But my son ended up with most of those. I ended up with a, ca- a couple of extras. I mean, I was the coach, so I had extras, you know. <laughs> now, let me, let me, oh, no, are you like me? All that old racing uh, apparel that you got is just oh stuffed in trash bags in your attic? Yeah, mine's in, in uh, containers, and it's we got plastic inside. Totes. Yeah. I got plastic totes, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I still have mine. I got tons and tons of stuff, and they're just piled in bags. I've been trying to figure out what to do. I mean, I was, you know, NASCAR Hall of Fame, you know, they got some – uh, I don't know if they got any crewman uniforms down there. I, I tell you, a, a couple years back, I had this fella reach out to me. Um, actually, it was a fella's mom. And lo and behold, his name was Mike Atwell also. What about that? And uh, he was getting ready to get him a little a dirt late model or something. And, and from what I understand, they were kind of, you know, getting it for him to help kind of keep him out of trouble, kind of keep yeah. him on the right track. And, mm-hmm. And uh, when it came time to, to, to race it, they didn't really have enough money for a fire suit. So she just happened to reach out to me. And so I ended up sending them, I think it was a Penzoil fire suit. So somewhere out there, I don't know if he still got it or not. But Says Mike Atwell. Mike Atwell, Atwell on the back. You know, just... <laughs> Atwell, yeah. So that's a pretty cool little story. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've got a bunch of old uniforms. Yeah, just sitting there collecting dust. I had dust. one at Robbie Gordon's when he did the double duty at Indy. Gigi oh. gave it to me. Oh, that's cool. I got a that's Tennessee cool. one. You remember that? Oh, yeah. I got mine still. Oh, yeah, wow. it was Sterling Marlin, Tennessee I was, car. I was wondering if you were on there with yeah. me. I probably should have brought that picture yeah. to We did then. Bristol. We did yeah. uh, the old Nashville. fairgrounds. Yeah, Nashville fairgrounds. Yeah, nobody, hardly anybody oh, probably man. remembers that right, place. Right, right. So that one, were you there when Sterling won? All right, wait a minute. Yeah, because he won it with the – was it a channel lock car then, though? I, it wasn't, yeah, I wasn't It wasn't a Tennessee no. car. Because no. I ended up um, – there was like this thing where – when Sterling run, I was Jack Man in his Bush Series for him because I was his cup Jack Man. But Nemechek wanted me to Jack his car. And the Nemco. So Nemechek went and talked to Armando and got it worked out to where I was going to be with him. And then I was like, well, at least I'm getting paid when I go Jack for uh, Nemechek. So it was yeah. like $350, <laughs> yeah. you know. And so I was with Nemechek whenever he ran at Nashville. And he ran good there too. But then Sterling ended up winning it. And I was like, dadgummit. Yeah, so Nemechek was – the first official job I had changing tires on the 42 car. And I would say my last technically full season of changing in NASCAR was on John Hunter's truck. Okay. So I got to win, uh, we got to win two races with John Hunter. And uh, I tell you what, shout out to that kid. Cause you know, they raised him right. He's, he's a good kid. Yeah. He's going to be one to watch. Good. And I think he just signed with Gibbs from what I heard. Oh, did he? Okay. I need to make sure I get him. I sent him a text. Uh, it's been a couple weeks ago, but I think he was probably racing at the time when I sent it. But, but I need to make sure I get him in here before he hits too yeah, big a time. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's a good. He's, I remember when he was a kid, and oh, you so see, do I. remember he was, yeah, he was so shy he I, wouldn't say two words. I can remember when Andrea was pushing him around the the garage area in one of them little like little tyke things. Yeah. And here he is, you know. All yeah, up. yeah, yeah. He's got yeah. a kid on the way, doesn't he? Or is, oh, I yeah, don't know. He just had one, actually. Yeah, just Did had he? a kid. Yeah. 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 So I saw some pictures of him and his, uh, I guess his wife. I mean, I, mm-hmm. I know there was some of the stuff going on with that where, yeah. and I ended up, uh, yeah. So anyway, that's, a, that's another story. Juicy but that's cool. for the <laughs> yes. awkward moment. Well, you're <laughs> <laughs> what is it about leveling the waters? <laughs> I don't know, but let's just remember that number at Jersey Cape Yachts is 609-965-8650. There you go. All right, so now uh, what are your uh, – let's say – let's go into your future plans now uh, we've already covered your roots. 
My future plans. Yes. That, that's take care of them youngins. Take care of them young. Spend, Those are twin daughters. You yes. Know? So I have twin daughters, um, Cassie and Cheyenne. Twelve years old. Twelve years so, old. Wow. Um, one looks like their mother, and and one looks like me. Bless her heart. Uh. Um, <laughs> but uh, really, my goal is really family oriented right now. I mean, that's we're we're trying to. We love. I know you guys are here camping, and we're big campers. Um, uh, we love to travel. And uh, so really, you know, my goal is just to spend as much time with them. You know, they're 12 years old. You know, technically, by the time they're, you know, 18, oh, they'll yeah. be leaving. So we only got like four or five more summers left with them. And, and, and you got uh, about two years to talk to them. That's yeah, it. Then, then, then they're, that, then they're yeah. their mother's problem. Right. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. But, um, you know, I, I'm really enjoying the, the, the IMSA stuff and, mm. and what we got going on over there. And it's, it's a different experience. Um, but right now, really, the goal is just to uh, to spend time with family, you know, and uh, enjoy life. You know, we worked yeah. so hard back in the day, and uh, it, it took a lot of, you know, a lot of time away from family. And yeah. uh, when I when my girls were six months old, that's when Chad came to me. He's like, so uh, what are you doing this weekend? I'm like, man, whatever you tell me to, boss. Well, that turned into the rest of the year traveling full time, you know. Yes. <laughs> so, um, you know, Lindy was pretty impressed and really excited with Chad over that, but um, it all worked out really good. But yeah, just just to to spend time with my girls and uh, you know make sure that um, you know they have what they need to succeed, mm -hmm. and you know and and try to give them you know all the cut out some of the hard lessons I had to learn uh, right. growing up. Yeah. Uh, so that's really you know that's and to sit and reflect. You know we were very fortunate to be a part of a lot of cool stuff. Hey, and, right at the perfect time oh, because it's changed a lot. It it's has. Not, it, it's it not. Has. I mean, David and I have discussed that with other people is that we never thought it. We always thought it would just keep oh, getting, I know. rising, rising, mm -hmm. you know. And and part of that is the familiarity with the old old school names. No more Waltrips, no more Earnhardts, no more Yarboroughs, no, you know, legacy yep. drivers. The and petties. you talk about the, the heyday of it. You know, one of the, the coolest thing, not one of the coolest things, another cool thing that I remember was Bristol. All right. You, you know, it, you know. You correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the stands was at 170,000. 160. 160,000. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, and, and you know, packed tight, baby. It was tight. You the couldn't. national anthem and and the show that they put on at Bristol. If that doesn't give you chill bumps, right now, yeah, right now, look at sure. that. I mean. Yep. Yeah, because uh, they'd ra raise Lee Greenwood up, and uh, yeah, I'm proud to be yeah. an American. He, the little guy, he's up there singing that. Yeah, it give you goosebumps. Oh, and and, and all the fans, <laughs> the fans with the cards. will hold the cards oh. up with the flags around. I mean, and, every yep. seat is packed. Yeah, you know, and um, the, and, it, and you were you would never you you thought I'll never get a ticket to the night race at exactly. Bristol because you got to die and have it willed to somebody else. There was never tickets available. And, 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 you know, it, it was good racing, yep. you know, it was, um, it, it was just quite an experience to, to see all those stands, you know, completely full of people. Sure. And, I'm, you know, I don't know if, you know, I can't say that NASCAR is less popular. I think it's just that, you know, there's a lot more access to, to online stuff. Yeah, and, absolutely. And stuff streaming like in right, your hands. Streaming. You can be anywhere. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, but it, you know, and I think after I did notice after watching a little bit of the Xfinity race at Nashville this past weekend, it looked like the stands were pretty full and they're starting to get some guys back. Yeah. Okay. And I think after this COVID deal, you know, everybody's kind of really wanting to get out. And, right. You yeah. know, not just, you know, have their so, face in their phone. Right. So right now yeah. would be the time for NASCAR to take advantage of this. People wanting to get out and making some incentives for them to come onto the racetracks. Right. Sure. You know, yeah. and that's. Yeah. I will say that, you know, that's the one thing about the, the WeatherTech series and the IMSA deal is how accessible it oh, is. Yeah. Um, it's, I agree, because when I was there, you know, in other words, being a photographer and walking into a cup garage with a camera in my hand will draw attention. If you, you can't walk up and shoot something under the hood or in a wheel well. IMSA, you want to sit in the car? Go ahead. They put kids yeah. in the car. Yeah. They, oh, you yeah. Could, Take pictures on anything you wanted. There was a full access. Come right in the garage. Absolutely. Come right in. Yep. Sounds kind of like the, the way the drag racing does. They let you come into pits and yeah. meet and then, in the drivers. And then they center. had a, they, every oh, race, they would line up race morning for about two hours and have autograph sessions in front of everybody's mm -hmm. hauler. All the drivers had to come out and sit there and do autographs. Yeah. <laughs> 
I'll tell you what, I'm opening up the phone line for questions if anybody wants to call. And that includes anybody out there listening on the radio or driving in your car, whatever. 704 873 9929. That's 704 873 9929. If you have a question or a comment for Mike, any of you on, on YouTube or out there listening, Mike, uh, Bob Patterson. You remember Bob Patterson? Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Hi, Bob. Yes. He says, uh, All the best to Mike. You were one of my uh, many that taught a mailman during i forgot he was a mailman that's right that, that talked to mailman during the week how to be a pit crew member on the weekend thanks and uh <laughs> yes and uh and, and scott travis and the beer man says congratulations i'm proud to call mikey a friend oh I, well the same same with us beer man there we had a lot of good times and um i hope to get down there and see you again i hear he's down there in daytona right oh, oh yeah yeah, yeah. 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 life large yeah we'll probably, I'll probably be down there for the historic 24-hour race here uh near the end of the year so maybe me and you can get together You'll have to, uh, you, uh, anyway, we'll talk about that later. Mike Hill that, that I have on my show, I've had him on a couple of times, but he lives up here this way and he always goes down for the 24 hour. But I've got a bunch of video I've taken from down in uh, Florida and I actually putting one together, it's uh, in search of the fountain of youth. Like I went to all these different Ponce de Leon parks and all this kind of stuff mm-hmm. looking for where is the fountain of youth. So mm. anyway, it's some of my creative stuff. <laughs> I just got to get on with it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So it should be interesting. We'll see, you know, I'll do, start doing TikTok and uh, Instagrams and all that kind of stuff. So it's D M I am on everything, but Janice sent a picture of the, um, leave us one. I saw on Facebook too. It's John Hunter and his wife, Taylor and their daughter, Aspen Palmer born on March the 31st. So yeah. Very, oh, I guess I can make the picture bigger. There you go. Oh, so congratulations, there John. Yep. Good deal. That's right. So, uh, J- uh, Jim Dooley says so many places to be. So see NASCAR except, for the top of the fence, <laughs> right, Dickie Dennis? Oh, do you know who Dickie Dennis is? I think me and Phil had this conversation. So yeah. he climbed to the top of the fence at Richmond? Yes, 2014. You, and you would be the first person not to know who he is. Remember during the race, they had the, the, he's the infamous fence climber at Richmond that climbed up and turned four to the top of the fence during the cup race. What, 2008? 14. I think 14. You might have to bring that up on YouTube for me. I'm sure. It's yeah. Up. Oh, you it will. Is. And he got up there and he was all frustrated and pissed off and because he, he wanted to take a picture of Harvick <laughs> and he forgot his phone. <laughs> yeah. yeah so, so he throws his hands up in the air yeah. like, I can't believe what he just did. If I'd have known, I'd sticky. Here's my camera. Get a couple shots. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So y'all keep he, talking right quick. Yeah. He's a good old boy from uh, Virginia. He's not far from here. He. He's supposed to come to one of them modified races, Dickie. Caraway on the 2nd of July. Come on down for the Smart Modified Tour. Richmond was always a really good race. Oh, yeah. That, it, actually, at Richmond, um, a lot of my family, my mom's side's from Fredericksburg, which is not too far Just from there. Just north of there, yeah. And um, so we would always have, when mom worked at Hutcherson Pagan, um, she would always get uh, infield passes. You know, uh, Richmond was just pretty much a parking lot. Drive in, yeah. Yep. yep. So we would always set up down there and turn one and two right there by the fence on the infield. And yep. all my aunts and uncles would come. And we'd have a huge cookout and have a big time. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. All right, so I got the video. Uh, I want to see this. And I was thinking about putting it on here for everybody else to see. If I can uh, <clears throat> just figure out how to do it here, and and then we'll do that. So It's time to, to get your creative juices out. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I've got it. I just have to, uh, yeah. It's, it's something I haven't done a whole lot of. There we go. I think this is it. And put it right here. Oh, there. That's it. Okay. And let's see here if I can get it transitioned over. And now I just pretty much lost everything. No, that's the window scene. Okay. Let's see here. Got it. And play. All right. So now as far as the sound, I'm going to have to figure that part out next. All right. So there's. All right. You don't really here have you go. to hear it. You can just see. Yeah, it. that's fine. All right. So here's the, the fence. And yeah, I don't even know that this one has a. All right. There you go. So this is right. there, there's about five or six different videos, but this one shows the uh, the crowd of people gathering down below. Dicky, he's up on the fence, and he's wanting to get a selfie with with uh, Kevin Harvick <laughs> as he goes by, and so he jumps up. That was not a good video. Oh. Sorry about that. So he he goes and uh, here he's like, here, hold my beer. And he goes and uh, <laughs> got some. Yes, watch here. Here, hold my beer moments. Yeah. So he goes and jumps. Okay, let me switch his camera back over. He goes and jumps up on there, climbs up on the fence. Now he was in the army. He was in the uh, uh, I guess paratroopers and things. Mm-hmm. Well, he, he was a mechanic. Fence climbing division. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so it was one of those hold my beer moments. So, anyway, he jumps up there and um, 
and then he gets escorted out. And I believe he spent, how long did he say he spent in jail? 15 days? No, it was longer than that, wasn't it? 40, day, 40 days, I think it was. 40 or 50 yeah. days. Something crazy. So. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Was the juice worth the squeeze? That's what I want to know. Yeah, there yeah. you go. <laughs> <laughs> Climb the walls and the fence. You know? uh, that's it. <laughs> so Jeff says, Biggin's little brother was jacking for Sterling when we won in the channel lock car. Oh, yes. He was Josh. Yes, Josh. Yeah. Hey, so, I forgot about that. He was. Then he got run <laughs> over by somebody and kind of yeah. ended his career. I think he was at RCR when that happened. Yeah. So I can't remember who ran him. over him. Right. Ran over his ankle. Ran over his ankle, yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah not And like, then Biggin, uh, actually, I got a picture of Biggin. He, he carried tires for a little bit, but now he's a pretty successful fabricator yeah. in his own right. Yeah. He's doing a lot of drag racing and stuff like that. Yeah, Biggin's Customs. Yep. Out there to the drag strip, yeah. Mm -hmm. He's doing doing very good. He's got that car. It's a sleeper, I guess you call it. days. But it's a, um, it's a car that it's, it looks like a rust bucket, and it's a Camaro. And 45 days, okay. And he's got a clear coat sprayed over it. And he goes out there and it's got like twin turbos on it. And he just goes out there and spanks them all at the drag strip. It's ridiculous. Wow. Did you read what Dickie wrote? That Amazon says, has bought a lot of the land that's around the Richmond track. Several of the campground areas aren't there anymore. Oh, yeah. How about that? Bummer. So they got rid of some of the campgrounds around Richmond. Uh, so he was an infantry Bradley mechanic. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you for your service. That's right. Yeah, so he'll be coming down here one of these days. So, all right. So, anybody have any last minute questions for Mikey? We're going to wrap it up here. So, we're down to the wire, about to finish up. But I also want to th thanks everybody for watching. And if y'all would go ahead and hit the like on this video so mm. that uh, YouTube knows that you liked it. If you don't have any interaction on here, then they say, well, you know what? We're just not going to show it to anybody else, <laughs> which is fine too. Y'all got to see it. That's what's good enough. <laughs> and then my friends out there on the radio got to listen. So, I hope y'all enjoyed this. We were talking to Mike what, Atwell. What drivers do you have in your JR3? So we have um, we have a lot of funded drivers. Um, the one driver that we have is Mike Skeen, who comes and helps us out a lot. And then it really varies. It wouldn't be anybody you really ever heard of, um, okay. you know, because they come in and we run a couple races with them. And now if we go to the to the IMSA stuff, we'll have to step our game up a little bit, but. You know, we got a lot of really good drivers that come in and um, just, you know, for the joy of racing and just love to race. Good so feel for us yeah. if they, they so, got it or not, yeah. Yeah, so we're able to, uh, you good. know, facilitate that yeah. and give them that experience. Good. All right. We're so very Kenny good. Colesback wants to know what kind of plane you fly. Oh, when I was flying, it was just a, a Cessna 172. <laughs> okay. Ken, so uh, Kenny has his pilot license as well. Yeah, it's... I tell you what, I'm not going to lie. I got my license, and then we found out we were pregnant with twin girls, and I didn't think it'd be a smart thing to oh. be a lawn dart. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, right. so I kind of backed yes. off a little bit and, uh, you know, just focused on uh, making sure they were taken yeah. care of. Yeah. Right. It does change you a lot. It, I mean, it does. I think it changes a lot of drivers, too. When it, Once they have kids, they change. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, know. your whole perspective changes, yeah. um, you know, just sure. – what you're living for, I yeah, guess. Yeah, I drove faster yeah. after I had a child. <laughs> get diapers and yeah. get home. Speaking of the song, or, or the other way, speaking of the song, oh, I want to get away. Anyway, yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, Jana says she was in victory lane with the Channel Lock win. Oh, excellent. And uh, Jim Dooley says, D.D. Dickadinus, you need to demand royalties from him for showing the videos of you. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> At least that wasn't the greatest Checks one. Checks in the there. mail. There's some really good videos of that on there. I'll definitely have to check it bad. out when I get home. It'll be something for me to watch yeah. with the girls when I get home. Yes. Brian Henry just tuned in. Oh, really? Hi, Brian. We were talking about Brian Henry earlier. Yeah. Matter of fact, we sure was. So. Yeah. Both brought him Brian. up we both have, brian henry's we were talking about <laughs> yeah we were yeah that's true your tax guy we were talking about donnie guy. fair brian yeah. henry i'm sure you remember donnie fair funny right. story about brian henry since he joined in yeah here you go one little funny story i remember i'd go down i'd always use huh. his tools in the fab shop oh yeah and i'd always jump on him because he never had a file I'm like, no reason we cut ourselves on everything. You ain't even got a file in your toolbox? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. How about that? And he's still there. I believe he's still at Ganassi. I mean, we need to keep in touch a little better than we do. But uh, It's life. Yeah, know, it life is. takes a hold, and it's just it's so hard to. Yeah. But thank you, uh, with that being said, for this opportunity to, to kind of take oh. this this drive down memory lane and kind of, you know, resurrect some of these, these old emotions and feelings mm -hmm. that, you know, it's, it's haven't got to talk about in a while, you know, because, you know, get to reminisce. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, 
it's definitely, you know, all worth it looking back and uh, yeah. all the good friends and the good memories that we've made and, you know, all the fun stories we can tell and all the dirt we can hold over people's heads if we wanted to. Yeah, for sure, man. We do, <laughs> we do know a lot of stuff about a lot of yeah. people. <laughs> Absolutely. Brian Henry says yeah, he did so that on was... purpose, by the way. Yeah, I bet he did. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. Yeah. So if y'all have any questions for Mike or any comments, go back on here after the video stops, you can go back on and comment. You can't go on to the live, the top, the live chat and comment, but you can go on to the video itself. And I will make sure that Mike gets those questions and comments because I still get, Absolutely. I get, yeah, I still get questions and comments from, you know, past guests from the past two years. Sometimes somebody will go on and, yeah. you know, just make different comments and stuff. And they're always very good. Yeah, and thank our guests, our live yes. guests tonight. Thank the you Rodriguez guys for just came up That's right. live the in the Florida. house. Nice to yes. see them. Paul and Kim. I was saying to him that I don't know how you guys do it. You come here and you talk just so, like you're talking like a normal conversation. That's all it is, right? Yeah. Yeah. All nervous. Well, <laughs> and uh, so. It always comes out really good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's so, so much to tell, you know. I know. It's just like a storytelling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, but thank you. And so. Um, so, uh, Richard Bain, I, I'm going to put that question on to the after the show because we are just – well, do you have a, a favorite racetrack? Let's go ahead and answer that one. But I'm also going to tell – Richard Bain is the prize winner for the day. This oh, is his hey, first time tuning in. the wheel, but yeah, we but can – that's okay. Uh, my favorite, much to, to Phil's displeasure, I will have to say Indy. Uh, uh, I just – I you know, uh, to be able to kiss the bricks <laughs> – Oh, yeah, um, if you won there, yeah. <laughs> and sure. I don't know, do we Would have time for a little quick story about oh, this? Yeah, good for it. So we were there with Steve Park testing, and uh, first day of testing near that we are talking, I said, hey, guys, I said, I hear this funny rumor that they use the bricks from the original track to make backfill, and if you go through the creek, which runs through the golf course True. and all that, and you can actually find them. Yep, yep. So we devised this plan to – to, to execute this and, and go out and let's see if we can find some of these bricks. So sure enough, after first day of testing, we all go down and we trample through this Creek, right through the golf course, people up there playing golf, you know, they're looking <laughs> down at us. Here we are digging through the car. Yeah, oh yeah. You know, of course we didn't take our shirts off or nothing. So we were, you know, I'm sure DEI was proud, but sure. all of us were able to find an actual brick. Oh, and it has embossed on it. Culver, Culver, I think, yep. Block Company, 1901. Yep. Oh. Yep. And so I still have mine. Well, I was able to, when we won with Jeff Gordon, yeah. I got Jeff to sign it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I won with uh, Jimmy on the road, and I got him to sign it. Wow. So, one, that's one of my favorite tracks, but two, that's probably my favorite momentum. Sure. Is because, you know, just yeah. all the memories, just that one, you know, article brings up, you know, yeah. and I have it. And, that's awesome. You know, it, yeah. it's. And those bricks yeah. are gone now because oh, yeah. back then, rumor was you could go down there and you could find them. And yeah, I know sure that there. I know people that went in the last five or 10 years and you couldn't find You nothing. couldn't find none, oh, though. Yeah. And I'm then, sure. I, you know, to have the, the trophy, if yeah. you've ever seen the trophy, yeah. is yep. the brick. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. cool. You know, yep. so the, yeah. that's my quick story. Well, that's great, man. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's really awesome. So I'm thinking your brother has a brick too, right? Is he not? I have no clue. But I don't know that it's an original like that. I don't know. It's actually it looks like it's a lot of them are in pieces too. Yeah, yeah. We stuff, were very so, full. We found yeah. a bunch yeah. of broken pieces, right. but the actual yep. fine. Yep. And, and I actually saying that we took the I took the 48 guys. I told them the same story, and we were out there testing, and we did that, and everybody uh, you know found a brick. Joe Claridge, Mark Pachowski, mm -hmm. some of my old road guys from the 48 sure. car. So. Hmm. All right. Well, um, also thanks to Jason Shoemaker for stopping by, who is Tony Glover's son-in-law. He's Mary married Tony Glover's youngest daughter. Which so, makes you feel and, old because uh, I remember when they were so small. So, uh, yeah, I know. How about that? I do, too. I remember Christy, very beautiful lady, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. she would always come to the track. And so uh, Jason was a good friend of mine here. He works for the Airedale County Sheriff's Office. And, and then one day we were just happened to be talking. He's talking about my racing show. And he's like, my father, he started talking about my father, his father-in-law and this and that, and Tony Glover. And I'm like, what? What do you mean, Tony Glover? And he's like, yeah, I'm married to Ashton. And I'm like, really? She's old enough to get married, first of <laughs> all. And then it's like, yeah. So anyway, that was that was it. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. But that's very cool. So, David, tell Richard yes, Bain how to. Oh, um, okay, Richard, go to, actually go, either go on to my website, dhamiam.com. And you'll see where you can contact me there and send me a message, or you can go on to a racing roots with ham on Facebook 
And make sure you like that page, by the way, so you know every time we go live. And you can send us a message on our Facebook page. That would probably be the easiest thing to do right now because I'm still working on the website. Yeah, and just give me your mailing address. And uh, there's Kim Henry. So she says, I'll look at some of my favorite people in in one screenshot, Mikey, Tracy, David, and Phil. Yes, (laughs) I'm glad y'all are tuning in finally. (laughs) Yes. So remember next week you can tune in too every Monday evening got my blind spot going on here but uh <laughs> so next week we're gonna have richard i'm why did i say that uh spencer boyd i was thinking richard bain here i was talking to him uh spencer boyd who is the uh truck series driver right now uh he'll be on here with us but i'll Excellent. make sure to thank mike at well thank you so much for coming up thank you the pleasure's definitely and, all mine yeah so you can go back and, and tell any of our old sapco friends that you ran into me and you were on the show and absolutely yes. but one you, day uh, we'll do a reunion yeah we'll have to do that we could just do it out right here in the you studio you rent out the go-kart um yes. track the gopro the absolutely yeah. oh yeah gopro and make yeah. sure none of us get killed though so. oh. don't invite natalie decker though oh sh- <laughs> i'm just kidding will, just kidding she will spin you out just to pass you <laughs> and she told me she did it on purpose she's like that's the only way i can pass at that track that was the uh k K10 or whatever over in Concord. Is it K1? Yeah, uh, K1 Speed. K1. K1. Okay. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. She, she just took me right out. Just I was trying to Put you in the fence. Huh? Oh, yeah. Big You're not time. the only one she took out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the whole field, I think. But yeah, I, Dickie Dennis loved that story about the brick in the creek. And I did too. That was great. I'm glad that I asked that. I'm glad Richard asked that question. And so we got that answer from you. All right. So, y'all, thank Whoa. you so much for tuning in. Thank Jersey Cape Yachts. Wow. Jersey, yeah. Jersey I'm Cape looking Yachts, at, right. go to the Jersey Cape Yachts Facebook page, guys, and look at some of these yachts they redo. They're yes. gorgeous. Yeah. All, I mean, they start from scratch with the teak wood and everything to rebuild mm. these things. Jersey Cape Yachts on Facebook. Pictures. A lot of pictures. I'm a picture guy. And <laughs> speaking of yachts, I'm ready to uh, go back down to Key West. See, uh, yeah, back, back to Key West or go see uh, our buddy Bigger Man down there and get out on the boat. So. Let's do it. He got um, a boat? Yeah, he does. Oh, yeah. He's got a nice Coming boat. Coming to there. see you, Beer Man. There you go. <laughs> so Brian Henry says, uh, Sapco reunion sounds good. Bob Peterson, most of us have run out of skills. <laughs> 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 all right. We well, all have a good night and uh, tune into the Billy Buck Morning Show tomorrow morning with a side of ham. I'll be back here at 6 a.m. So y'all have a good night. Real Country 550 and 92.9 WAME Statesville. So my favorite. Welcome to Racing Roots with Ham. If you don't know our host, David Ham, he's a 25-year NASCAR veteran, engine builder, and jackman. Live every Monday evening, we have a new guest. From the racing world with their stories, their paths, their their racing racing roots. roots. Sponsored by Jersey Cape Yachts. Billy Buck, we did run into each other. We are running all over this place. We are trying to fill.